Thanks again for coming to visit us at VI High. We've been talking about waveform charts and graphs. We discussed their main differences. We looked at adding multiple plots to each. We changed their timing around. And I've been shamelessly encouraging binge watching by alluding to an XY graph discussion, which has finally arrived. After which, you can go to bed, get up for work in an hour, spend the first hour tweeting to your friends about the amazing finale, hashtag us. But please, no spoilers. XY graphs are different than waveform charts and graphs because we're plotting two arrays against each other. For instance, let's say I have an array of pressure readings and a corresponding array of temperature readings. I want to plot them against each other. An XY graph is perfect for this. As always, bring up our context help, and it tells us we need a bundle function. I run it. Now, which one is which? The context help tells us X array and Y array. So generally we'd have the temperature on the X array, so we'll switch these. There we go. And I want to relabel these. Now that's all pretty simple, but the last episode I talked about using XY graph for inconsistent timing. We'll see how to do that. I'll open up a new VI and put down a random number function. which I'll have go 100 times. Ten milliseconds per time. And at first we'll start out pretty simple. I will use for my timing palette the get date time in seconds. And as before, I'll make a raise of both of these. As we learned, whatever is the top input to the bundle function will be the x-axis. So I want this to be the x-axis, this the y-axis. Wire them both to the border. Put a bundle function down and wire them both to the bundle function and then to an xy graph. Run it. Now my values across the bottom, what are those? 3.5 billion? Well, those are the number of seconds that have elapsed since January 1st, 1904, as our context help tells us regarding the get date time in seconds. Now that's not too helpful for a display though. So I can right click, properties, go to my display format for my time x-axis and then I'll change it to absolute time and I'll get rid of the date. So I just show the time. Actually, I'll get seconds. Okay. Let's run this again. Now this is shifting around a little bit because the time at which I start the VI and thus the first timestamp won't always be exactly on a second. So we see it moving around a little bit. But the common way this would be used would be not in the method that I've shown here, but rather we would typically have one or more data points being acquired at a single time and then have a timestamp affixed to that. And the next time that we get another piece of data, we put another timestamp on it. So that the end result is that we'll have an array of values and then an array of timestamps corresponding to when those values were taken. For instance, maybe I have a state machine and I cycle through my states and then one of my states is take temperature. Whenever I arrive at that state, I'll take the temperature and then get a timestamp for when that temperature was taken. And then I put it on a graph, this XY graph, because the time at which I come to that state in the state machine varies. It's not consistent. Note that in many cases, you'll often see this timestamp value be changed 
to a double precision. Right click, insert, from the numeric palette, from the conversion palette, to a double precision float. The reason being is that this double value ends up being easier to work with, easier to manipulate, to compare between different states, to subtract and get differences in time, etc. Now if you take our Lucid LabVIEW Fundamentals training, there will be an exercise called the LabVIEW Toaster, where you use a state machine to control the states of a toaster, timing how long it takes to toast, to cool down, checking for temperature, and so on. There are various states in the state machine, and in a couple of the states, we check the temperature. So here will be a use case for the XY graph application we just discussed. On my front panel is my temperature versus time, with my time already set on the x-axis. Looking at the block diagram, I see that I have a cluster with two arrays in it. Now this cluster with two arrays in it is the format that the XY graph expects. I put that in a shift register so that it's accessible to all the states in the state machine. If you're unfamiliar with state machines, go check out VI High 49 and keep watching for a few episodes. We talk all about state machines, error handling, passing data between states, and so on. As we see, there are many states, and the state where we're pulling the temperature is here in the toasting state. Don't worry about all the code down here. In fact, I'll move it down. This is the part we're concerned about. In this toasting state, we access our array of timestamp and temperature. We get the new value of the timestamp whenever this is taken, and we concatenate it onto the array. We do the same thing with the temperature array. And then we bundle both of those back into the cluster, and each loop iteration we pass it to the XY graph. Now granted, there are a bunch of things happening in this loop, and we haven't really dictated our execution order to ensure that these happen at about the same time. However, the resolution I'm more concerned with is around the seconds range and not the milliseconds range, so this is okay with me. And we can watch it in action if we like. We run it, hit the toast button, and see that we record temperature and time together. Well, all this toasting is making me hungry. I think I'm going to toast up a salad. I'm cutting carbs. Thanks so much for joining us in this series exploring waveform charts, waveform graphs, and XY graphs. Do you like this stuff? Check out our course at sixclear.com slash labvtraining, either online, at a regional, or we'll come to your company. We'd like to meet you. Now, I have a salad to toast.